Here, here's how I would describe the storyline of the Bible. How can a holy God dwell in the midst of an unholy people? That's the story. How can a holy God dwell in the midst of an unholy people? So you have the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, there they are conversing with God in the cool of the day. Sin has not yet entered the human race, a holy God dwelling with His, his for the time being, perfect people. But they sin, and they get kicked out. And there's a sword place, and you can't go back to Eden because a holy God cannot dwell in the midst of a holy people, but He makes coverings for them. And he promises that one will come to crush the head of that nasty serpent. And then you go a few chapters later, and you have sin covering the world. And God was grieved that He had made because He saw that the, the only inclination of their heart was evil all the time, Genesis chapter 6. And so He sends a flood. Why? Because a holy God cannot dwell in the midst of an unholy people. And so He says, sin has flooded the earth, I'm going to flood the earth. And he saves one family, Noah, his wife, three sons, their three daughters, eight people in the ark. It doesn't take very long, and Noah starts to do some pretty bad stuff. And then you go to chapter 11, and the people of the earth are bringing and building up this tower to heaven. How can a holy God now dwell in the midst of these unholy people? So the Garden of Eden, he kicked them out. The flood, he wiped them out. Babel, he spreads them out. And then he comes to Abraham, okay, I'm going to promise that I'm going to make a great nation out of you. And he'd be as numerous as stars in the sky, sand on the seashore. And so he blesses them despite themselves. He blesses and blesses. They grow. They increase. And you follow the story and the trajectory throughout the Old Testament and what eventually happens with this new start. Well, Assyria comes along in 722 B.C., wipes out the northern kingdom, 586, they're finally in the southern kingdom, shipped off to Babylon, kicked out of garden, wiped out with the flood, spread out from Babel, shipped out to Babylon. How in the world is a holy God going to dwell in the midst of an unholy people? Chance after chance, time after time, Eden didn't work, and then Israel doesn't work. How is a holy God going to dwell in the midst of an unholy people? That's the storyline of the Bible, which is why verse 14 is so amazing. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. A holy God, fully God, as we've just seen, the only begotten Son of God, dwelling in the midst of us.